All right. Thank you for that again. But I do have some questions. Yes. Um, in that, uh, first, what is this knowledge now that was used to build the like of Asian Zimbabwe, uh, even Asian Benin, for example, because I am from Edo State. Uh, the capital city of Edo State is Benin. So I am actually uh, a descendant of the same people that built the ancient uh, Benin city and the ancient Benin empire. One description of ancient Benin is that there were street lights at the, at the mm -hmm. peak of the, of the empire. Of course, I'm not talking of thousands of years. This is only a few hundreds of years ago. <laughs> of course, street light, uh, it didn't mean that this light was powered by electricity the way we have it today. It could have been that maybe they put a lamp there, but the concept was very clear. The road were like paved, but not really paved, but it was so clean that you could see that the road was constructed. They were straight line. But the fact that somebody could think of it that in the night you don't have light, you need a street light to power throughout the night, this was an advanced form of, of society. But today, if you go to the same Benin of Benin City in Nigeria, it's almost like a disarray, as it were. So it means that in the time past, there were really this knowledge, whether they are only at the level of metaphysics or physical, the people could really do extraordinary thing. But where has this knowledge gone? Whether we are talking of ancient Zimbabwe, the ancient city of Benin, the builder and the, const and the constructor, the designer, or the ancient Kemet. Because all across Africa today, we are suffering. We are basically suffering. We are even finding it difficult to identify our left from our right. So where has the knowledge gone? I will tell you this. The knowledge is there. The knowledge is still there. All we need is a communication with those who possess that knowledge. Let me start by giving you an example in my own life. I have a doctoral degree, a PhD honor degree of theology from the Trinity Graduate School of Apologetic and Theology of Kerala in India. I had to write a thesis in order to graduate from, from that school. I wrote my thesis in three weeks. I say three weeks, not more. When I mention this, people say to me, it is impossible. It was not a bogged thesis. That thesis was published by Armatan in Paris. It was reviewed by a scientific journal of the University of Toulouse in, in France. So it kept the attention of the scientific community. But how could I happen to write that thesis in three weeks? My answer is that I, as an African scientist, I don't rely mostly on my brain like will a, a European scientist do. I mostly rely on my intuition, my intuitions. Now, what is intuition in Africa? Intuition is someone talking to you. Intuition is just an ancestor speaking to you. The more you listen to him, the more clear he will be speaking to you. The less you listen to him, he will be discouraged and go. What I mean here is that those who had those knowledge are still there. When they had gone, they didn't tell you that I'm dying. No, I, I, don't, I don't know an African elder 
people, when he come to the last point, he said that he will die. No, they say, I'm making a trip. I'm going. So they know that they are still there. They are just, they are just turning their back. And they know that you, they still can communicate with you. In reality, those people who possess that knowledge, those knowledge cannot go higher unless they communicate that knowledge with us. But there is a prerequisite for them to do this. We have first to re-establish re the fundamental. What was the fundamental? When we learn the ancient Egyptian culture, we learn that the fundamental was the divine mystery, the divine knowledge, their scientific religion. That was the basis of everything. So that's why I, for one, started with Nzilaloa, which is a school of divine mystery. We have to reestablish that divine mystery. Then we will have people who can communicate consciously with those gone alight, and they will have those knowledge. The knowledge is there. We have only to know how to communicate with them. We don't have to rely on the white people's schema, which, which impinge on us that when, which impinges on us that when something dies, that's the hand. No, there is not a hand for a white, black, black man. Death is not the cessation of life. Death is the transition to another kind of life, another plan of consciousness. That is powerful. It is powerful. Um, especially when you come to understand the fact that the way we really organize ourselves in Africa today, it is completely away from our consciousness, from our understanding of life, from our spirituality. <laughs> It's like you are abandoning your ancestors and you want to have peace. I think it's difficult. It's like you are abandoning your culture, you want to have peace. <laughs> it is difficult because it's like you are taking a fish out of the water and the fish <laughs> is going to be celebrating. It is difficult. Uh, talking of this power, I'm not an expert of this, but I am just thinking as a human being, I'm just reflecting. Now, let me give another example in Nigeria. In fact, I'm going to give two. In Nigeria, when we want to swear in the, the ruling elites, we usually use the constitution. Of course, the constitution is a valid document in Nigeria, and of course, we use the Bible or the Quran. Those are also valid. I'm not saying they are not valid. But the, those, those documents are not able to hold our, our politicians accountable for the enormous corruption. Now, what can be the alternative? Say maybe, for example, somebody among the Igbo is a leader, a governor of a state. Instead of maybe using the constitution, this individual is taken to the shrine of Amadi Oha to swear that he will defend his people. He will not steal from the people. I can guarantee you, even in 2022, that individual will not steal. Because deep inside us, we understand the value of our ancestors, the value of our belief system. Let me give you another example. I live in Italy. Up until recently, Italy, was a very bad name for Nigerians. Is that a lot of Nigerian women come here to do prostitution? I know that prostitution everywhere. And predominantly, the people that are doing prostitution in Italy predominantly are from my state, which is a do state. This is the state, these people actually have disreputed the, the image of Nigeria and the great Benin people. But one day, the Oban of Benin 
decided to place a ban, decided to make a course on whoever will do prostitution in the way that they have been doing it in Italy. Guess what happened? Suddenly, it stopped. Suddenly, just suddenly, it stopped. This is all in confirmation that the ruling, uh, there is power. There is also respect for the power. Of course, that is why it exists. If we don't respect it, they don't exist. Which means, if we are governing ourselves based on our history, based on where we are coming from, based on our relationship with our ancestors, there is no way we can be where we are today. But if we are like the fish that is out of the water, like we are in Africa, it is becoming difficult for us to find peace. Because we are trying to find peace through the lens of another person. What do you have to say about that? I told you that since the white people came here, we live in a cage, in an epistemological cage. We have, they have convinced her that reality is material, which means that when someone dies, everything stops. There is no life after death. That is the cage. With that cage, our system is completely spoiled. We believe that the only good we, we, we can afford is the good which is in the cage. This is not the way black people were behaving before the arrival of, of the white people. 